All right, folks. Tim here from High on Cheap Tech, and tonight, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of seeing all this iPhone 11 hype. iPhone 11 this. I, okay. Granted, there's nothing wrong with Apple products, but they're being pushed all to hell. But some people are pushing them a little too hard, and it becomes pretty obvious when you watch them run some tests on them, which are so invalid that it's just ridiculous. I'll explain right after the intro. Okay, we're back. So I'm gonna try to keep this simple. Uh, I did work 20 years for Underwriters Laboratories testing things, and we had standards. Tech reviewers <laughs> are not engineers, folks. They come up with these wacko testing methods, and, and they don't do the physics research. They, they don't think things out. So today, I'm, when I get home from work, uh, I watched a few videos. Once again, iPhone 11 this and iPhone 11 that. And, well, we're in that cycle. And pretty soon the Pixel will come out and it's going to blow everyone away. It's going to have a top bezel. Oh, my God. All right, so we're going to use this phone here as a demonstration. And my hand is concrete. So CNET does a test on the glass. All right. And they build this machine so the phone will drop squarely like that. Or squarely like this. Will the glass hold up? I want you to think about that. When something hits like this onto concrete, perfectly smooth concrete, you spread the impact zone over the entire thing. You didn't drop it on something like a a gravel, in a gravel parking lot. You dropped it on concrete asphalt, it wouldn't matter. Now, let's look at a case. So the case manufacturers understand this stuff. Uh, let's just take my, uh, Me a two case here, the TPU section. Now, the edges not so stout. The back just basically smooth with some grippy things, right? Mm -hmm. What do you got there? There. There. There or even this whole edge and this whole edge. It's thicker. Why is that? Well, as your phone falls, odds are you're not gonna be holding your phone and go, oh, I'm gonna drop it now, I'm just lining it up perfect. Wrong. You're probably gonna be pulling it out of your pocket and, and it snags on your something. And it goes spinning off and if it falls, it ends up coming down on the edge, one edge. Now, they're showing you this with no case on the phone, which is irresponsible to start with. Somebody's buying a thousand dollar phone. You should be sitting there saying, this is a moot point because you should have a case on it. Do the test with the case. But if it hits on that corner, 
the glass is going to shatter out from there because you have a single point. Now, single point of impact. Now, all that energy right in one spot. Doesn't get spread, but now it radiates from there and it's gonna shatter the glass every damn time. I don't care if you've got gorilla steel on it. It's gonna break it. So, thanks CNET for uh, building a kind of a cool machine. But if you really wanna test stuff, for Christ's sakes, if you can afford to buy a $1,000 phone, or two of them, just to drop, you could have paid an engineer $1,000 an hour, a real engineer, to come tell you how you should drop it. It's the worst case scenario, not the best case scenario. I'll, I'll give you a little story here. Uh, Years ago, I can't remember when this was. It was in the 80s sometime. I remember reading about it. Yes, back when you read things. And, uh, the U.S. Army Golden Knight jumps out of an airplane. A Golden Knight's a, their paratrooper team. And, uh, or, you know, parachute team. Demos. And at an air show. And the shoe doesn't open. So what did he do? He spread his arms and his legs and got himself parallel to the ground and guided himself towards a black patch of dirt that he could see. Yeah. He didn't just go tumbling to the ground because, well, he's a being, not just a phone dropping and he landed in this guy's garden away from the air show <laughs> he didn't have much of a choice and he smacked face down into the uh, freshly cultivated dirt he broke his nose now had he just not use his head, that spreading out reduced his falling speed, but he spread his impact out all across his body. And it just happened to be his nose hit something a little firmer. Still hit at 120 miles an hour, and I'm sure he wasn't feeling well, but he wasn't dead, and he broke his nose. Had he just landed willy-nilly, say on his feet, well, his feet would have pushed, he, first off, he would have accelerated. His feet would have pushed up right through his hip bones and into his chest cavity. If he'd hit head first, he'd have broke his neck. It, it, on his side, anything. Point is, don't fall for tech reviewer testing. It might look cool. They built a very cool machine, but their test is totally invalid. So I'm just calling out CNET. I don't care if they were testing an iPhone or a Samsung or what. It wasn't a proper test. It wasn't well thought out. And it was totally invalid. And it was so irresponsible. When I hear tech reviewers say things like, well, I don't like putting a case on my phones. Quit watching them for a while. Or at least take that with a grain of salt and go, wow, that guy's an idiot. Don't forget, they're making lots of money off these reviews and they don't give a shit just because they don't care they've got 
35 bones parked on a bookshelf somewhere. Most of us have one phone we use, and if we drop it, we'd like it to not be a broken, shattered mess. Always put a case on your device. And remember, tech reviewers are just that. They're guys who sit in front of a camera and review stuff, and normally none of them have an engineering background.